Hey friends, welcome back. Today is Thursday, January the 7th, and we're back for another day of Number Corner. I would like to remind you that this month you will have a checkup. So make sure you're paying attention to what's happening in these videos. Rewind it as you need to make sure you're understanding the concepts that we're talking about and practicing and working through together so that you're ready to rock the number corner checkup this month. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. You may already see behind me that I have shown today's calendar marker. We know that it shapes and what kind of shape is this? Yes, it is a triangle, but can we be a little more specific? What type of triangle? Right, it's a right triangle because you can put um, or in that corner, it makes a perfect square, perfect 90 degree angle. So we are going to fill that in on our um, observation recording sheet here. All right. So we said it was a right triangle. And how many or what's the area of this right triangle? I'll give you a moment to kind of think about it. Did you get one square unit? Because it looks like we have about, I would say about three fourths of a square filled in here and then another fourth here. And it looks like this piece would fit perfectly in this missing section right here. So I would say that's one square unit. All right, any other special observations about this particular shape? All right, well, let's keep it moving. Um, I did confirm that indeed we are collecting three quarters for each day we are in school. So today would be our fourth day of school in January, um, which means we need to collect another three quarters. We have one day, two days, three days. Oh, looks like we already have our fourth day collected. I wonder how much money that is. And you may have seen in yesterday's video, the observation recording sheet that we are going to be filling out. We're actually not going to fill that out today. Um, what we will do today, though, is play a game. And the best part of this game is that if you are doing the Bridges curriculum, you've played this game before as a part of one of your workplaces. It is called Division Capture. So each person or team chooses a color. We'll roll a dice to see who goes first. And when it's our time to actually play the game, you'll roll the dice and then figure out wh which equation would best match or which equation would make the sentence true if I were to insert the number that we rolled from the dice. Okay, so here are the directions here. Roll the dice, use the number that you get to make the equation true. Write the number in the box using your color. We'll take turns until all of the boxes are filled. And if you roll a number that you cannot use, then you lose that turn. The goal though, is to try to get three in a row, four in a row, or five in a row, which can be going across horizontally, going up and down vertically, or going diagonally, okay? Once they're all filled, then we'll start circling the places that you got in your color, and you get more points for the more um, numbers that you got in a row. So one point for three in a row, two points for four in a row, and then three points for five in a row. Do you think you guys are ready to play? I know I am. I played this before with some teachers during um, a professional development, and it was fun. I think I didn't win though. But um, let's play it together today. So I'm going to blow this up for us and make myself smaller for now. Um, let's see where the dice is. Up oh, here we go. All right. So we're going to roll. I'm going to let you guys roll first. And then I'll roll, and whoever has the highest number will get to go first. Okay, here we go. All right, you guys got a four, so let me spin. I also got a four, 
So I'm just gonna let you guys go first, okay? We're gonna say you're red, I'm blue. So you're playing against me. Now, when we're rolling or spinning the spinner, make sure you're looking at the game board and really thinking about all the different possibilities of um, where you could place that number to make an equation true. And again, the goal is to get three in a row, four in a row, or five in a row. Okay, rows across, up and down, or diagonal. So you guys are gonna go first, so go. we're gonna spin again. You're red, and then we. I want you to figure out where you could put that number. So your number is seven. Take a moment, look at our game board, and figure out where you might want to put seven. All right, do you see a couple different spots? Where do you wanna go? In the corner right here? Let's put it in the corner. Um, so I'm gonna write the number seven. How do you know seven belongs there? Right, because nine times seven is indeed 63. Very good. It's my turn to spin. Let's see what I get. I also got a seven. Well, while you guys were looking for your seven, I was looking at some other possibilities and I know that six times seven is 42. So I'm gonna put my seven here. All right, let's keep it moving. Ah, four, where can you put four? All right, we're gonna go down to this other corner here. Eight times four is 32. Sure, I know we're trying to get four in a row, but um, it's fine because we just started. So, so okay. Um, and there were no fours this way and there were no fours that way. So we'll keep it moving. Here we go. Ah, Ms. Tremel got five. I am going to put my five, hmm. Ooh, I can make a diagonal, maybe. So 12 times five is 60. So I'm gonna put my five here. Now, I know that you guys have played this game before, so hopefully you find it fun, or maybe you're thinking, why are we playing Mr. Number Corner? But it is um, just a review, a fun review to provide some foundations for some of the workouts that we'll do later on this month, okay? Simple division to help us with when we get to longer division, okay? Your turn. Ah, you got another four. Where else could four go? Yeah, you could put four here. 12 times four is 48, and maybe you can capture this whole row. Who knows, I guess we'll have to find out. So we'll put four here, and Ms. Tremel will spin. Okay, so I got three. I wanna put three. Hmm. I can put three here because 12 times three is 36. So also as you're making these equations true, make sure you're giving me the reasoning behind how you know that it's true. So you hear me using a multiplication equation. Just yesterday we talked about multiplication and division being inverse operations. So when you're finding where you want to put your number, make sure you're thinking about how you know that to be true, which you might be thinking in order to figure out where to put it. So that's that's good too. Ah, oh, you guys also got three. Hmm. Where are you gonna put it? All right, yeah. Nine times three is 27. So 27 divided by three is nine. Oh, I got four. 
Let's see if there are any more fours on the board. Aha, nine times four is 36. I'm gonna put my four here. Looks like all my blues are kind of clustered together. <laughs> we'll see if that'll work out for me in the end. All right, six, where can you put six? Yeah, you guys can work on getting this one possibly. Six times five is 30. So I will put a six here. All right. Uh, another three, let's see. Hmm. No, I can't move. Well, do y'all remember what happens when you roll a number and you can't play it? Yellow's a turn. So it's your turn now. You guys got a three, so we already know it doesn't fit anywhere on the board. So my turn. Four. Hmm. Four is not going to work either. So it's your turn. You guys have six. Oh my gosh. You have four in a row. Six times 12 is 72. Way to go, guys, even though I want to win. But at least you're practicing your facts, right? Getting ready for some longer division. Okay. Give me a number I can work with, please. Ugh. Can't work with four. I lost another turn. You guys have five. Awesome. You can put your five. Nine times five is 45 here. Let's see. Three. There's no more threes. My turn again. Oh, seven. Okay, perfect. So I can put seven here. Give me at least a diagonal for some points. Because seven times 12 is 84. Seven times two is 14. Seven times 10 is 70. 70 plus 14 is 84. You guys got four, you lost a turn. I got four, lost a turn. You guys get seven, where can you put a seven? Okay, so there's two places I see a seven can go. Now, where should you put it? Yes, I'm so upset, you guys got five in a row. <laughs> Seven times eight is 56. Good job. Okay, I got five. So, are there any more fives? Nope. And we know a multiple of five would have to end in five or zero, and that's the only one, and that's not five. I lost a turn. You guys lose a turn. I lost a turn. I'm, I'm guessing you guys lose a turn. That looks like it's on the four or the five, which either one. So I lost a turn. Okay, you guys got a seven. Is there anywhere else you can put a seven? All right, seven times seven is 49. You can put a seven here. Hmm. Five, nope, I lost. Seven, you guys got another seven. Yeah, you can put a seven here. Five times seven is 35. So I think I know who's winning this game. I got a five, I lost a turn. You guys lost a turn. I lost a turn. You guys lost a turn. So we actually um, gonna stop here just because this could go on all day. But you guys obviously one. You got five in a row here. 
which I believe that gives you three points. And then you got um, three in a row here, which is one point. So you have a total of four points so far. And then you got three in a row here. So five points. So three plus two is five. And I will make you guys pick a one. Um, and then for Ms. Trammell, looks like she only has 1.1 1 .1 measly point. It's possible that I could have gotten a couple more points, but just for the nature of this video, um, we're not going to go back and forth to see who's finally going to get a six <laughs> or another seven. Um, so that concludes our video for today. I thought it was a fun game. It's going to prepare us for some of the workouts for later on this month. If you weren't able to follow along with me, that means you need to practice some more multiplication facts and work to recognize by drawing some area models the relationship between multiplication and division. You guys have a wonderful rest of your Thursday. I will see you tomorrow for the last day of the first week of school in January. Bye now.